This week on Deadful Sundays, we'll be returning to African philosophy and to our recurring focus on the impact of colonialism. Specifically, we'll be looking at the calls for the Vatican to join mediation efforts in the Cameroonian Anglophone conflict, as reported by the Independent Catholic News, ICN. In looking at this crisis, we'll be applying Euphrase Kezilla Harbi, amongst others, to this impact of colonial legacy on African selfhood and locating a resolution in the realm of being in language. Firstly, the article. This week, the Catholic Pope has been in Iraq, as we can see from this picture here. His world tour has led to many calls for the Catholic Church's involvement in a number of different crises, specifically in this case in Cameroon. ICN reports that, quote, civil society groups in the Anglophone regions of Cameroon are urging the Vatican to join a Swiss-led peace process as the security situation in the Central African nation deteriorates further. Local activists believe that Pope Francis has more influence over the Cameroon leadership than any other leader or country, end quote. Furthermore, it is said that, quote, the International Crisis Group estimates that the Anglophone conflict has claimed 4,000 lives, whilst local NGOs believe as many as 12,000 civilians have been killed. Attacks by Cameroon armed forces, including the burning of villages, has forcibly displaced an estimated 700,000 people out of an Anglophone population of 6 million. The violence and a school boycott have kept more than a million children from school for years. The Norwegian Refugee Council has described it as the world's most neglected conflict for the second year in a row." End quote. Clearly, the Anglophone crisis is an issue of huge proportions. Secondly, some background to the Anglophone crisis. Here I quote at length from ICN, as they helpfully note some useful historical context. Quote, the Anglophone area is also known as the former British Southern Cameroons because of the UK's colonial legacy. The unrest began in 2016, when the Francophone government tried to impose French law on Anglophone courts practicing English common law. Yaoundé officials also sent French speakers to teach a French curriculum in Anglophone schools, which traditionally teach a UK curriculum. However, Anglophone grievances stretch back to independence, when it is alleged that promises to ensure the British Southern Cameroons remained a separate entity were broken. In a subsequent referendum, English speakers were not given the option of forming a sovereign country. In the 1970s, the Francophone government dissolved the federal system, leaving the Anglophone regions, 20% of the population, marginalised. Colonial legacy is still very real and very impactful, even today. The imposition of various European languages has created numerous conflicts around the world, with Cameroon just being one of the latest. The imposition of language systems and the knock-on effect that has on selfhood is palpable. Many have noted how historical experiences affect today. The following poem, Le Totem, by Leopold Sidar Senghor, shows just that. Quote, I must hide in my innermost veins, the ancestor with the stormy skin streaked with thunder and lightning, my guardian animal. I must hide him, that I may not burst the dam of scandal. He is my loyal blood that demands loyalty, shielding my naked pride against myself and the arrogance of blessed races." End quote. Thus, Senghor points towards ideas of an individual's being as inseparable from the experiences of the ancestors, and an individual's communion with said ancestors, wrapped up in existence. The past, then, is wrapped up in the present, and so the future. The experiences of one's ancestors, for example, the Anglophone and Francophone, affects how one views oneself now, how one experiences the world. On this point of selfhood and experience, in the case of Cameroon, the vast majorities of Cameroonians are only able to access senses of self and interact with one another, and so the world, via colonial languages. As such, they are linguistically bound to a westernised road which leads to white universal truths, to logos, to the quote-unquote rational. Their being is restricted on account of their language. The question one must turn to, then, 
is how can such conflicts be resolved and or presented? How can selfhoods be reasserted in a rebuttal of the colonial? Well, as Keza Lahabi states, quote, we can only make these first steps by leaping out of a Western metaphysics. It is on this basis that a conceptual framework for the following generations will be created. These efforts have been hampered by African writers who constantly struggle to construct an African mundus with a centre of its own. We argue that it is the very idea of the centre that must be destroyed. There is no centre of knowledge." End quote. In short, the West, the Anglophone, the Francophone, must be decentered for the Global South. The West, the Christian, the politician, must not be interlocutors, must not be the middlemen between neo-colonial subjects. Instead, those who have been colonised must be allowed to centre themselves, their own experiences, their own being, and move from a space that does not orbit around the West, like the moon around the Earth. Cameroon, like all other former colonies, must assert itself in itself and for itself rather than use the West and its institutions as a substratum for being. This marks the end of the 21st episode of Deadville Sundays. We hope you enjoyed it and that we'll see you again next week.